Um, so Sillergy, uh, sorry, Siler Gray asks, how does compassion fatigue affect you? It doesn't, to be honest. So I think what fatigues me is being inauthentic. Like what's tiring is putting on a fucking act. So what I love about what I do is it doesn't inf it, it fatigue, like, I, I mean, sure, I'm tired at the end of it because it's like a kind of emotionally active, but it sort of feels like working out. Like at the end of a workout, you kind of feel physically exhausted, but like spiritually powerful. And that's, so compassion fatigue doesn't affect me because sure, there's like emotions and that can be tiring, but I find it like spiritually gratifying to like help another human being. And it inspires me and it gives me energy. That's how I can do it for like 10 hours a day. What's hard to do 10 hours a day is live a life that is like not worth living. To live a life of like falseness and to put on a mask, like that's fucking fatiguing. What's wonderful, and this is the big problem with gamers, is that they actually don't live a life that's spiritually fulfilling. And so they feel like they have low energy. They don't get that. Energy doesn't come from, from like expending energy. Energy come, uh, sorry. Energy comes from like living a life of purpose. That's what gives you strength. Doing something that matters. Like when you're, and you think about this, like think about the times in your life where you've gone the extra mile. And those are times in your life when like someone needed you. Right. That's when you actually like you're able to to double down, like when your friend is going through a breakup, that's when you can stay up till four in the morning and like support them and the next day, go to class and still do a decent job. When you live a life that is like worth living and when you live a life that's aligned with what you care about and what you believe the world needs, that's actually invigorating. It gives you a ton of energy. And if we think about what do gamers deal with, like they deal with like a lack of energy, like they have trouble getting out of bed, they have trouble getting out of the house. Like, why is that? That's because they're not tapping into energy. They're not tapping into an energy of like doing something that has purpose and meaning. And so compassion fatigue, sure, it sort of affects me a little bit, but most of the time when I go home, I feel tired at the end of a day of work, but I feel fulfilled. And then that fulfillment like carries over to my kids. And though, even though I'm like physically exhausted, you know, I'm still going to like attend to them in a way that that it's I mean, it's cool. It's it feels good. Um, so. Uh, your ability to be engaged, did you have that before training, for instance, the body language, facial gestures are on point? I mean, I think you have to remember that. So Elite McFeet, let me ask the question more clearly. Your ability to be engaged, did you have that before training? For instance, the body language, facial gestures are, are on point. So I think, first of all, you guys have to remember that you are an amalgamation of your entire life, right? Like sometimes, um, like sometimes you feel like something comes from just one part of your life, but you have to remember that you're kind of a confluence of everything that's happened to you. So for me, I found that like I spent most of my life hiding my feelings. And when I went to India and spent years sort of starting to become a monk is when I started to tap into who I was as a person. And then when I came back to the U.S., if you actually train to be a therapist, they actually train you to be more of a blank slate. Well, like if you think about the classic therapist, like Sigmund Freud sat behind his patients. They couldn't even see his face. And it's to be as neutral as possible because their idea was that the more neutral you are, the less you inject into the relationship and that the more that the person that you're doing therapy with can like express themselves. So by removing yourself from the equation, all that's left is 100% of them. And what I actually found is that the more of a blank slate that I was, the more tired I would feel. I felt that I had to like restrain who I was as a person. And I also like, like it didn't seem to be helping. Like I was a shitty therapist for like two years. And I started to become a good therapist when I actually threw out the playbook and I started to listen to myself. So I became, became something that's called an active therapist, which is that I don't listen to my patient's problems. I just don't listen because I find that fucking boring. I can't do that. It's exhausting. I share my thoughts with them and I share them early and I'm wrong a lot. Like, you know, therapy, like, so what we do over here is not really therapy, but part of the reason that we get to feeling so fast is because I'm not a blank slate. Like, I think when I sit there, like I used to train, like I used to force myself to be a blank slate and six months would go by and like people that I was working with wouldn't get better. And I was like, what am I doing here? I'm going to just try to be me. And I find that when you're authentic, it actually like helps other people out. You feel better. I think like truth is amazing. There's a Sanskrit word satya. 
And they say, like, satya means truth. And they say that a lot of spiritual energy comes from being truthful. And I absolutely believe that. I think a lot of the reasons that people, gamers, struggle is because they live a life of lies. They're just lying all the fucking time. They lie to themselves. They lie to their parents. They lie to their loved ones. They lie to their teachers. They lie to their friends. You lie, 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 lie. And they don't get anywhere in life. You get strength from truthfulness. You speak the truth. You call problems what they are. You bring them into the light. And you face them. Truthfulness is about facing the music. And when you start to live a life of truthfulness, you think that your world comes crashing down around you, but the opposite happens. You start building it. You find energy. You find reserves of strength that allow you to change and transform your life. Like, Jessica, like, why was what happened with Jessica powerful today? It's because it wasn't lying. It was truth. She faced the depth of her feelings. She faced the idea that her, her father did not treat her like a human being. That, you'd think that that would destroy you. You'd think that if you face that head on, it's going to just fucking destroy you. But the beautiful thing, the paradoxical thing, the amazing thing is that it does the exact opposite. When you face your demons, somehow you find the strength to like fight them and overcome them. The way to overcome your demons is by like engaging with them and fighting them and even like giving them a hug from time to time. And so my facial uh, gestures and, and body language, like, I agree that they're a big part of what I do with people. And so I'd encourage you guys to be authentic. And you have to be authentic with yourself. And did I have to train? Yeah. So I trained one way to like learn who I am. And then I trained the other way. So I think this is really important too, where if you want mastery over something, you can't just do one side of it. You have to do all sides of it. Right? Like you have to learn, like if you want to be a good chef, you have to know when to use salt and when not to use salt. So what I learned is when to use a facial expression and when to use body language and when not to use a facial expression and body language. So there's a lot that I show and there's a lot that I don't show. There are a lot of thoughts that I have which I restrain. And so is it a product of training? Yes, but I'd say more importantly, it's a product of thoughtfulness. It's a product of understanding like what's going on inside me and figuring out when to, when to laugh and when to cry and when to be neutral. When to be silent and when to speak. Um, in terms of feeling okay with yourself, aren't there times, so Fitness Gym says, in terms of feeling you're okay with yourself, aren't there times you shouldn't feel okay with yourself and that's completely functional? Isn't that one of the main human drives? Absolutely. So I think not feeling okay with yourself can also be authentic, right? So like there are times where you should treat yourself with compassion. And there are also times where you should sort of call yourself out for being like fucking up. And case in point, that's what I learned with you, Fitness Gym, because there were some things that I did that actually were not good. Like, I appreciate that you've got thick skin, but I kind of fucked up in our conversation, right? Like, there are times where I, I sort of felt bad about it, and I think it's good to feel bad about it because I, I sort of didn't, I didn't give you a fair shake because I had a 10-minute conversation with you where I painted you in a particular light. And even though that didn't hurt you, that doesn't, like, just because you have thick skin doesn't mean that I didn't make a mistake. Right? Like, the fact that you were okay with it is fine, and I'm glad, I'm happy for you. But I still made the mistake, and I need to be honest with myself about that. That if I want to, if, if I, I should be careful about the kind of light that I paint people in. Because if we had stopped at 15 minutes, like, Jessica would have felt like shit. Like, I have to be careful about opening a door and having enough time to close it and tie it up in a positive way. So I think it is functional for us to feel guilt. I don't think we should stop feeling guilt. I think guilt is a, a sign when we're off track. That, that's what it can mean. And so we should absolutely acknowledge and be truthful and authentic with ourselves about when we overstep and when we understep. Um... Yeah, so, so Fitness Jim kind of goes on to elaborate and he says, yeah, I imagine that s someone who is obese, has diabetes, doesn't feel okay with themselves and their body. Absolutely. So I'm not someone who's sort of for like full body acceptance. You know, there's like this movement that you should accept everyone for who they are. And I think that, yeah, you should accept everyone for who they are as their person, but that there are also some health behaviors that are like not going to be good for you and you should work on changing those. So acceptance doesn't mean turning a blind eye. And this is important. So you guys have to understand this. True acceptance doesn't mean turning a blind eye towards the bad half of you. I'm saying the exact opposite. That there are some people who feel like, oh, like, you know, if someone tells me that 
I'm going to have heart disease that my doctor is fat shaming me. Like, I think that's a problem because you're, you're bullshitting yourself. True authenticity and real satya is looking at the things that you're doing right and the things that you're doing wrong. And if when you look at yourself and you say, I'm not doing anything wrong, that's fucked up. So people say like, they, they come to me because I'm, I, I'm knowledgeable and I'm an expert, right? But like, I still make mistakes. I make huge mistakes. I made a huge mistake with fitness gym last Friday. And I can be good at what I do and I can still fuck up. And I think real authenticity and being okay with yourself, being like the best person for yourself, supporting yourself the best, means calling yourself out on your bullshit. And if you're overweight and you're obese and you have diabetes, you shouldn't be okay with that because that's not okay. You should be authentic with yourself and you have to say, okay, I shouldn't beat myself up. It doesn't mean that I'm a shitty person, but this is something that I have to change. I think the problem becomes when their obesity and the judgment that they create for themselves because such a huge part of who they are that they can't like that 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 keeps them from working out they feel so ashamed that they can't go to the gym and so i think you have to walk a fine line between like accepting like not judging yourself for being where you are and also accepting that it's okay to want to change and that you should change and grow